All right, what is up team? Uh, today, I'm going to be going over the basics of swing trading and talking about what essentially is how I trade, okay? I'm a swing trader. Uh, now, I'm up to literally trading 100% of the time uh, on a swing basis. So swing trading just means like you're buying a stock today, you're, you're holding it overnight, whether you're selling that tomorrow uh, in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, that's a swing trade. A day trade is buying and selling within the same day and scalping is like buying and selling within a couple of minutes. Um, so I'm gonna use Uber as an example. We're gonna jump right in, hop on the uh, hop on the chart. Okay, TOS pulled up. Uh, Uber was a trade uh, that I called out a couple of days ago inside the mentorship group. I'm gonna pull up that call out right now, um, and I just want to show you, uh, you know, how this trade played out, how I went about predicting it, and, and get into kind of like you know more of the basics uh, of just swing trading. But you can see, okay, I was looking at Uber. Here's the, the chart that I posted at the time. I was looking at this pattern that had been formed. This is the four hour chart. Now I do all my work on the four hour time frame. So you can see very clearly Uber making a high at, I believe that is 48. It's really blurry, I can't tell, but uh, Uber with that high right there. And since then, okay, pulling back and forming this pattern of lower highs, okay? Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, rejection at the 180-day SMA. Uh, again, I use three moving averages, the 180-day SMA, the 50-day SMA, and the 15-day EMA. Okay, 180-day SMA is going to act as the strongest either support or resistance. If the candles are trading below the 180-day SMA, that is going to act as a resistance level, whereas on the other hand, if the candles are trading above the 180-day SMA, that is going to act as a support level. So you can see um, it's this is a choppy chart. Okay, granted, uh, there are no clear rejections at the 180-day SMA except for down here. Um, so I wouldn't go. I wouldn't make this trade based solely off of that. Uh, but as you can see, I, I did like the the fact that you can see we pulled back and found support uh, at 2016 um, with that pattern of lower highs. It, it, taking that into consideration, all right, formed that support, formed a new low on the four-hour chart. Okay, so I, uh, knowing that the, the last move we got, the last pump, we were rejected at the 180-day SMA. Uh, taking that into consideration, I was looking to play uh, the move back down, okay, the rejection off the 180-day SMA and the move back down uh, to that low at 20 16. I calculated the margin for profit, which uh, all you have to do is go to drawing, drawing tools, and select that tool right there. And then you can click on a part of the chart, right? And then drag up, and you can see your margin for profit. So like 11%. So uh, let's just say right now we wanted to uh, see what our margin would be if we were going to go long on Uber. Uh, and we'll click around there, drag this up. Okay, move to the 180-day SMA would present like a roughly 10% margin for profit. So I went with uh, some Uber contracts, right? Uh, I bought puts because my prediction was that Uber was going to pull back down to that uh, low that we recently formed and form a new low. You can see um, I said that right there, okay? Uh, I'm looking to play a rejection off the 180-day SMA and a move back down to that level and potentially even a new low, all right? This play presents a 10 to 12% margin for profit, Okay, my stops were uh, around 2% to the upside, which was the 180-day SMA. Again, knowing that that level would act as uh, a resistance level, at which point if we broke over, I would be cutting this trade for a loss. You can obviously see, um, right, I ended up closing this trade a couple days later uh, for 45% profit. Uh, so it was a great trade. Uh, you can see in trade ideas, if I scroll up, I gotta go back a bit, it was right here, okay? I locked in $18,800 profit, uh, and then we could see some member profits if I scroll back up. Uh, here we go, Uber member profits. Um, so anyway, it was a great trade, I just wanna show you that, uh, and you can see if I pull the chart back up, the live chart, uh, Uber, look it, okay? Formed a new low, at 1990. So uh, when I called it out, you can see this was where that previous low was formed at uh, $20. We got the push rejection at the 180 day SMA. Uh, I played the move back down to that low. Okay, right there. So uh, just as just as predicted. So now uh, knowing what I just went over, uh, we could expect another push back up to the 180 day SMA, uh, and then a pull back down and a uh, and potentially a new low formed, right? Uh, so swing trading, um, you could swing trade based on a series of moving averages. You could swing trade based on like chart, uh, chart patterns, uh, Fibonacci retracements. Like there's many different strategies. Uh, there's so many different ways to trade out there. Uh, I trade solely based off of uh, chart patterns that I'm identifying and I'm managing these trades uh, based off these three moving averages. So uh, 
when I'm looking at a chart, I, I'm looking for a pattern because patterns always play out multiple times. So like most of the time, a pattern, you look at history, things happen more than once. And that is like the one of the most sure to be ways to trade, in my opinion. A lot of uh, indicators are more of a 50-50 coin toss and uh, it's like a complete gamble. Whereas like if you see a pattern that has played out over and over and over and over again, uh, you can more than likely expect that to happen. Uh, and I have like a series of patterns that I like trading that have positive or really good expectancies um, and that I trade multiple times based around these moving averages. So it's nothing crazy complicated that I do, but uh, it takes time to, to kind of understand like Obviously, there's more than just looking at the chart. Uh, trading psychology plays a huge part in trading. Uh, risk management plays a huge part in trading. Uh, and then the actual trading itself. So there's three parts of trading. I've talked about this before. And the actual like charting and analysis is, is one of those three parts. Um, but you, we could go through a couple more charts, right? And, and try to identify uh, more patterns together. What I'll do is I'll go through like four or five, 600 different charts trying to identify these setups. Because in, in every hundred uh, charts, there's, there's always one chart that presents some potential or maybe more. Uh, but there are opportunities out there even in a bear market. So you really just gotta be selective. All right, so say we just start going through some charts here, uh, looking at UA, nothing there. And I will literally just scan through. Uh, you know, visually scan. I don't use any sort of scanner. Um, all I'm doing is, again, looking for patterns uh, on the four hour time frame. That is, that is how I go about swing trading. And my, my preferred hold period uh, is between three and five days. Okay. So uh, you can see HBAN, very clear pattern of lower highs. Again, uh, overall direction is, you know, not in our favor. Okay. This, this chart is bearish. If the candles are going from the top left to the bottom right of the screen, that is a bearish chart. And if the candles are going from the bottom left to the top right, that's bullish, right? Uh, just very straightforward there. But uh, rejections at the 180 day SMA, you can even see that like, you know, candles did start breaking over uh, and we got a couple candles trading above uh, the 180 day SMA, but we were not able to hold that level. Okay, um, let's keep going because I don't really see, uh, I didn't really see anything there that I would have liked to take, nothing worth trading. So one of the, the setups that I like to trade and I go over all these inside the masterclass, first link in the description, little plug. And if you wanna copy my exact trades, uh, I post my entries and exits live. Uh, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. Just, you know, little disclaimer there. Uh, and the disclaimers will be in the description below. So um, let's see. Now here's a pattern uh, that I may consider and I would go ahead and I would put this on my close watch watch list, okay? So uh, close watch are 10 to 15 stocks that I'm gonna be eyeing, uh, that I'm gonna be going through uh, every couple days, checking on, seeing where they are, uh, where the candles are trading within the chart uh, and looking for a certain move depending on the setup that I am looking to trade. Um, and then ready to trade, obviously, I'm looking at three to five different charts on the day that I've already you know, established a, a somewhat of a trading plan and that I'm ready uh, to trade if the setup does uh, present itself, if the chart aligns. Uh, and then open positions, obviously, if I have any positions open, I'll put them in that watch list. But Penn, you could see very, very clear pattern uh, since Formia High at 81.94, very clear pattern of lower highs, rejections at the 180 day SMA. Very clear, one, two, three rejections, four rejections right here. Uh, what I'd like to see with this chart, uh, you can see we formed a low at 26.46. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just draw a, a nice little trend line right there or a little, little line right there. Uh, is a, a move back down to this low and potentially even a new low formed. Uh, but just say say we enter now, okay, knowing that we just got rejected off the 180 day SMA. Um, again, make sure you're always aware of the overall market, never trade inside a bubble. You always wanna know what's happening within, you know, the whole market, SPY, QQQ, IWM. I look at those on a regular basis, like every hour throughout the day. So let's see uh, if we were to enter and uh, buy some puts right now, right? So puts uh, are betting on the stock or the price of a stock to go down. Calls are betting on the price of a stock to go up. So we enter uh, right around here and we play the move back down to that low uh, or that support level formed at 26.46. This play would present a uh, roughly 14 to 15% margin for profit, okay? So you can kind of uh, see there how um, 
you'll start to pull out different charts that present different uh, you know, margins for profit. And then you could go ahead, uh, go through some contracts, run some calculations, figure out uh, you know, what you're willing to lose on the trade, uh, what you're trying to make on the trade. And based off that, like, is the risk to reward worth actually uh, taking the trade itself? I think you're starting to hopefully get the idea of, of how I swing trade and how I uh, find these setups. Again, everything is, is much covered in much more depth over inside the masterclass. And like I said, I do, uh, and that's inside the mentorship group. And I do also post my trades. I'm going to find one more stock here that would present some potential for a swing trade. Uh, let's see. Now, a, a very common trade that I liked taking a while back and, and now that I can't find so much of uh, due to the overall market is just a, a pullback to the 180-day SMA and a bounce off that level. But this setup is, as I said, it, it's become harder and harder to find due to the market just pulling back. Um, and SPY, even if you look at, like, just look at SPY, just so you can see what I mean. Uh, SPY on the four-hour um, is down... 20% on the year. Uh, so that setup, pull back and bounce off the 180 day SMA, the golden setup that worked for me that was working very well the last year and a half uh, has, no, you know, it hasn't stopped working, but uh, I just can't find charts that present that opportunity. That's why, you know, when you're a trader, you have to constantly be uh, evolving and changing your strategies or at least developing your strategies. I wouldn't say changing, uh, but improving upon your strategies, coming up with new setups based on the market. We can even go over to the NASDAQ 100, which is what I like to go through as well. Um, you know, Russell 1000, we could go through you know, different sectors, uh, Russell 2000. Um, let's see, let's go to the NASDAQ. ADSK. Actually, you know, this is not a bad chart. Okay, how I formed it. $330.48, a large pullback that might've been earnings or, yeah, that was earnings, see? Um, okay, rejections at the 180 day SMA, you know, slight push above, but we ended up pulling back, uh, formed a new low at 163.20. Again, just reject at the 180 day SMA. If this was four days ago, I would've uh, been more comfortable or not more comfortable, but uh, this play would've presented a larger margin for profit because say we enter uh, right now, Okay, let's just draw a little uh, support, support line right there uh, and then calculate the margin for profit uh, upon entry. Let's see, we'd be looking at a 5% margin for profit, roughly 5%. Uh, so would that be worth, you know, taking the trade based off of 5% margin for profit on the chart? Again, because I trade options, that could be a 60% move on the contract uh, based on the contract. So it depends. I would have to go. I'd have to go through some contracts. I'd have to run through a series of calculations based on the analyze tool to figure out if the risk or reward would be worth taking the trade. So to summarize, uh, I trade different patterns uh, within charts on the four hour time frame based off a series of moving averages. I always say like the, I finagle these words and I say it a different way every time, but I guess at the end of the day, I'm a trend trader and I'm trying to uh, narrow in on a certain pattern within a larger time frame. Uh, so again, what works for me might not work for you. You have to try it out and see if it works based off your personality and a bunch of other, you know, different variables, but go ahead, go through some charts, try to identify some patterns within charts and get out there and start trading. Again, the first link in the description is to the mentorship group. If you would like to join, go check it out. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Again, we post uh, one of these videos every week, a day in the lifestyle or educational video, and then a podcast every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So check out the podcast, subscribe to the channel. And with that said, I will see you all in the next video.